My name's Maria Wheatley and I've been researching ancient sites for about sort of 20 years now. It was my late father that first got me into dowsing and looking at places like Avery, Stonehenge, Karnak. My family then moved to America, so I have like dows like Serpent Mound around that area and uh, Monk's Mound, Cahokia. And the energies there really fascinated me. So that was my starting point, dowsing for fun uh, as a kid. And then, you know, as a teenager, I was far more interested in other things. And then in my 20s, uh, after I studied astrology and past life regression, I got back into the dowsing and especially looking at ancient sites for energy patterns, not just ley lines or dragon lines, but energy patterns. And that's my forte. For me, they're multifaceted. They do many different things and many different functions. So I, I personally don't believe it's any one thing. I think, for example, they're addressing health issues to a certain degree at some sites because the energy patterns and the evidence for that, like with negative ions and other things besides, point to that. I also think that where you have certain types of ley lines that are very speedy, if you will, they travel quite fast across the landscape, that could have been used for different things, telepathy uh, and transporting ideas across. Uh, the landscape as well. I mean, for example, in the Pacific Islands, there's a shaman there, and he always used to say, I just talk to the song lines, and the fish will come to me. We don't have to hunt them. So, and he used to do that quite regularly in front of witnesses. So he was saying he could use the song lines for hunting to get the fish in a hypnotic state to come towards him. So I think maybe the ancients were using it for telepathic purposes. I think the energies of ancient sites, you can detect them and they are functioning to a certain degree. When you have a stone circle proper, for example, that isn't ruinous like Avery or Stonehenge, it behaves far, far differently, which you guys have experienced at Roll Ride, it behaves far, far differently than, say, Avery or Stonehenge. So I think that the energies were definitely controlled. That said, I think there's a bit of a blip in their system around about 1800 BC because a lot of stone circles show a huge tinkering phase. They were taking stones out of the sockets and putting them back in. And it may have been like an energy overload or something. But something seemed to happen at that particular point. Even a site that has been harmed or changed will function with the energies because some of these energies are deep, deep, deep underground. For example, the geospiral pattern I talk a lot about, which is the harmonic surface pattern of water created by the Earth herself, yeah, that is permanent, it's perpetual. That water is constantly being replenished, yeah, it won't run dry. Uh, that will generate a magnetic field, that is in constant energy zone all the time because the water's been replenished and the spiral pattern is associated with that. So that will be there whether it's at a stone circle or somewhere in South Africa where you want to bore for that type of well. You just have to go down a long way. Uh, well, Robert Kuhn, uh, for example, he had a vision of the rainbow serpent and the plume serpent where he saw Mary and Michael going around the globe and connecting across at certain places. But one thing that inspired me about John Michel many years ago when I had a conversation with him about that, he said, well, in ancient China, they were all connected by the smaller veins. So if we see those to be like big arteries of Gaia, then you have smaller lines. And each one of these lines is said to represent a planet and a color and a harmonic. So I think everything is connected just like our bodies and you have these main veins uh, and others that are yet to be discovered besides, yeah, and they're all connected with much smaller things and patterns as well are connected to the wider whole. So where Mary and Michael veer off at an angle or where Gary Bilcliffe's, Ellen and Bellinis veer off at an angle, what Hamish and Gary are both uh, saying ha has in common is the spiral pattern. It causes the Mary and Michael line to veer off, which suggests to me that that is the most powerful thing in the land because it can cause a gigantic energy current to suddenly whiz off at a 90 degree angle or something.